would be interesting to know how the Shiny Happy People producers found the people they interviewed for their program. Brooke Arnold, an ex-IBLP participant, is one that was presented as knowing many of the ins and outs of Bill Gothard and IBLP. What I've been able to find out about Brooke is that she is a comedian and writer and atheist. She supposedly knows a lot about the behind the scenes things that went on. How does she know? And how do the producers of Shiny Happy People know what she had to say was legitimate? As I said, I found she was an atheist, as are many of the people they interviewed for Shiny Happy People. Of course, this would mean that atheists being interviewed would certainly have it out for Christianity and homeschooling, so that makes sense. One of the first things Brooke describes is that Bill Gothard supposedly came from a Christian dynasty because his father was the head of the Gideon Society. Bill Gothard Sr. was a minister. He was actually head of the Gideons Association, the little Bible that you find in every hotel room. That's there because of the Gideons. So Bill Gothard kind of comes from this evangelical dynasty. In reality, Bill Gothard's father was a minister and served in many different capacities. He didn't create the Gideon Society and only served as the head of it for about five years. The rest of the time, he was working on various ministries like most Christian ministers do. There was no dynasty. There was a father who was an active Christian minister. That's all. His father wasn't famous in the Christian world, and Bill didn't have some kind of easy path to Christian fame or influence because of a family dynasty or legacy. That just isn't true. Again, did the shiny happy people producers even check out any of her claims? It doesn't seem like it. Brooke also claims that Bill Gothard's teachings became a means by which he exerted control over his followers. Right after that, you see a graphic that is commonly attributed to Bill Gothard and IBLP. Maybe it would have been good if the producers would have checked out that graphic. They placed it in the middle of the supposed IBLP materials on the screen, but that graphic is nowhere to be found in the IBLP materials. It does not originate from them. We typically think of a cult as, as having a commune or having kind of this, you know, centered geographic location. Gothard didn't have that. Bill Gothard's not a pastor. There was no specific church. His teachings became the means with which he exerted control over his followers. She then takes the umbrella of protection concept and twists it to look like Bill Gothard is in the mix of authority of everyone just under God. Even the graphic on the screen doesn't include Gothard. God creates an umbrella of authority over us. The kids obey the parents, the parents obey the pastor, the pastor obeys Bill Gothard, and I guess Bill Gothard talks to God himself. So again, the narrative being created here is suggesting that IBLP and Gothard are reigning supreme over all who are involved in the organization by placing him between them and God. There is nowhere in any of the materials, in the seminars, in the speeches, or the books where IBLP or Gothard suggest their organization or Mr. Gothard himself are in any way an authority over churches, pastors, families, or parents in any way. Yet the narrative here is that this is a cult and Gothard is the head of it. I asked him about this too, which you will see in the interview in the documentary to come. Then right after Brooke lays out this false narrative, Joshua Pease, who we talked about in a recent video, makes the same type of claim suggesting that homeschoolers and Christians who attend IBLP events are all in a cult by being tricked into believing this particular false narrative and Bill Gothard is sneakily bringing them in by looking calm and reasonable. Gothard's whole vibe was that he was like the good authority. It's like, look, authority's not so bad. Look how reasonable it is. Look how calm I am. Look at how much sense this makes. Someone teaching principles that others find useful is not a cult. There was no control whatsoever that IBLP had over churches, pastors, or families. If a family, a specific family, looked to him in that way, that would have been a problem that family had. So far, I have found no church that had his picture up as someone to worship or to blindly follow. 
there was no cult. The next thing I want to address that Brooke says is that Gother taught that each person had a spiritual gift, but that all women were one category and all men in another, which put women in place of servitude and at a disadvantage. Really and truly, like everyone's a prophet or a mercy. It's kind of a funny, like little typecasting. And prophets have carte blanche to be as big a jerks as they want, and mercies are just supposed to take it. And then, of course, all the men are prophets, and all the women are mercies. So her claim was that every woman was a mercy and every man was a prophet. That's simply not true. In my research, I found that according to documents from IBLP of those who participated in programs that asked about their spiritual gifts, many women were different things, including prophets, and men had different gifts as well. So again, her categorization of this concept is completely false. It seems shiny happy people producers, again, didn't do any research to find out if this claim was true. The next story Brooke tells is about a trip she says her and friend Amy took to visit Mr. Gothard. John Cornish, one of the co-founders of Recovering Grace, gives me Bill Gothard's phone number. And so I decide, well, we're in Chicago. Why don't we go over to his house? He was waiting at the front door, wearing a full suit, a tie. He had done his hair. The problem with this story is that I can't find any evidence it happened. I actually believe it could have, but so far I cannot find anyone who can testify to it. I asked Mr. Gothard himself if he remembers her, and in my interview with him, I brought her picture with me to ask him about their meeting. He says he doesn't remember ever seeing her at all. He did not recognize her. I described how she says she called him ahead of time and then came over during the trial days. He has no recollection of it. Well, he is an older man, so maybe he forgot. But I have not seen any indication he is losing his memory from my conversations and communications with him. But I still know people do forget things sometimes, so I asked his assistant, who was with him and living in his home, helping him throughout the trial days. He says no one came over as she described, and Bill would have talked to him about it even if he, for some reason, had not been present at the home at the time. And he also did not recognize Brooke from her picture. I tried to reach out to Brooke about this on social media, but I didn't receive a response as of the filming of this video. And he took us across the living room where there was a TV. And he does have a TV in his house. He's breaking his own rules. Wow. So. It's definitely him. I know it's him now. I just need to get him off the phone. What can I say to get him off the phone really quick? And so I said, uh, excuse me, sir, are you registered as a Democrat? He just hung up immediately. No, he screamed at me for about 10 minutes. <laughs> I wanted to talk to her friend Amy and see what she had to say about this alleged encounter. According to posts on the internet, Brooke is traveling around the country in a van that she's living in. And so maybe she's not received my request for comment about this. I don't know. But the story she gave in Shiny Happy People about going to his house at all is certainly in question. But even if she did, she described him as just sitting alone in his house. Bill Gothard used to speak to stadiums, you know, every week, and now he just sits alone in his house. This kind of Peter Pan-like character living in the home he's lived in his entire life. And the door opens and he's standing there with his shoe polish black hair and his wearing a full suit and tie. And you can just see that he's so excited that someone is finally coming over to visit him. This is someone who spent his entire adult life surrounded by crowds and he's spending his last years alone. I can tell you I've been there and he is actively working and in communication with people all over the world. So her description of his life now was quite skewed. He is not just sitting around. I will say Bill Gothard is different than anyone I have ever met. Everyone who has described him says he always wears a suit even at home. 
So when Brooke described him as being all dressed up to meet her at the door, it fits with reality. He always wears a suit and a tie at home, so he probably didn't dress up just for their alleged meeting. She then says he was looking at her during the prayer and she looked at him and it was like looking the devil in the eye. We sit down and he says that he wants to pray for me. And so he looks at the floor and closes his eyes and I look at the floor and close my eyes. And then I realize, why am I, why am I pretending right now? So I open my eyes and when I do, he's looking at me. His eyes are open. It was kind of like, you know, looking the devil in the eye. And I looked at him and he knew I had been lying the whole time I'd been there, pretending to be a fan of his and a follower of his. And I knew he was lying uh, about his religious devotion in that moment. She goes on to claim that Bill Gothard stole her childhood. And she says that there are people that participated in the homeschool program who are struggling financially, suggesting it's because of their lack of proper education. There's things that Bill Gothard stole from us that we could never get back, like our childhoods. And there's so many people who grew up in this educationally neglectful homeschool program and now are struggling financially to get by. So far, I have not found any families who used the ATI homeschool materials, who didn't use other materials with it. In fact, the program was not supposed to be used exclusively or used alone, even though that is suggested throughout Shiny Happy People. I've asked many families if they thought it was. Not one said they did. I also asked Mr. Gothard about it. He also said it was not to be the only materials used for homeschooling. Again, did the producers do any research before putting these claims in their docuseries? If they did, they had to find this out. And if they didn't, that's not a very thorough way to do a documentary. But of course, there was an agenda to feed. So mentioning that ATI was not intended to be used as they described doesn't fit their narrative. If there were any families that used these materials without any other homeschool books, videos, library resources, events, homeschool projects, activities, etc., that would be neglectful, but I haven't found any that did. In general, homeschooling is a benefit to most students. When I looked up the statistics about homeschoolers and their education levels, every possible indicator shows that homeschoolers did better on every occasion and in every study. A National Home Education Research Institute study found that homeschooled students scored an average of 15 to 30 percentile points higher on standardized tests than public school students. An article in Psychology Today stated, homeschooled students tend to score higher on tests of academic skills when compared to children in public schools across most studies. There is no doubt that homeschooling is a benefit in most cases, and a vast majority of homeschoolers in the United States have been Christians. Now on to something else. IBLP has a program to teach boys emergency response training. Brooke states in episode four that this program, which is ALERT, is actually a militia. Bill Gothard loves acronyms. There's IBLP, the Institute of Basic Life Principles. There's ATI, the Advanced Training Institute. There's EQUIP, which I don't remember what it stands for. There's COMMIT, EXCEL, ALERT. And I think that they're a way of confusing people. So, you know, ALERT <laughs> sounds really cool. Um, militia of homeschooled boys sounds a little scarier. So Brooks suggests that ALERT is really a militia of homeschool boys, which is a scary thing. The reality is that ALERT stands for Air Land Emergency Resource Team. It's not a militia. They use military training to teach discipline and readiness, but there are no guns or weapons involved at all. All the training is to prepare the young men to be ready to take on emergencies and help their communities or those they travel to serve. What we're aiming for is that we would train men to serve. Now, if you're going to serve, you have to have tools to do that with. And then it gives you opportunities to actually apply those service skills where you're on real world disaster. I wanted to do something in public safety and then realized how professional the training here was. Giving to those people 
who can give nothing back. To me, really sums up what it means to love. It has nothing to do with taking over the world by force, as is suggested many times in Shiny Happy People. That is a completely false narrative and misrepresentation of the facts created by the producers and those they interviewed. We will address more of that in future videos and in the Shiny Slander documentary. Next is one of the most egregious misrepresentations and lies I found that Brooks says in Shiny Happy People. Mr. Gothard had always projected this image that he only took a very small portion of money, he drove a very old car. I found out that the entire Gothard family was living incredibly extravagantly off of the Institute's money. There are numerous lies in this clip and I will address them next time. You will not want to miss it. Please be sure to subscribe and check out the Shiny Slander website in the links below. I hope to see you here next time.